Well, as the government works to address the rising cost of living, ANC MP Dr. Joseph Maswangani expressed his hopes that the finance minister, uh, Godongwana, would expand the list of zero-rated food items. And it comes as the average price of a household food basket surges by nearly 100 rand from September to October, raising concerns about persistent food price hikes. Let's talk about this now with Mervyn Abrams, who is the program coordinator at the Peter Maritzburg Economic Justice and Dignity Group. Mervyn, good morning to you. Thanks, as always, for being available to us. Your reaction first in what the finance minister said yesterday. What's in it for low-income earners? So good morning, Iman, and good morning to all your viewers. Yes, the, our first impressions of the medium-term budget speech yesterday is that it was quiet, really very silent on government social spending. Uh, and, and quite disappointingly so, because even though he mentioned that the president had identified uh, the possibility of expanding uh, food, you know, the, the, the VAT exempt basket of food, as well as dealing with cost of living issues, in the State of the Nation address earlier this year, he did not give any indication on exactly what their thinking is within Treasury or how they're going to deal with these issues come February next year. So we are quite disappointed that he didn't flesh some of that out in as much as he fleshed out important other areas like infrastructure, uh, rebuilding, like he spoke about capacitating the state uh, and, and other macroeconomic issues. That lack of detail, what does it say to you, um, Mervyn? So, so essentially, I mean, based on our past experience, is that when he does not give us that detail in the medium term, then we are often quite disappointed when we get to February next year. So, for instance, we, we based on past experience, we have seen that, for instance, the SRD grant not increasing or increasing by 20 rand, which is not even sufficient to buy an extra loaf of bread, or the child support grant being increased by 10 rand, which, of course, also is much too low, and the old age pension as well. So we are likely, in terms of our fear, is that we will be back in that same position come February next year, and, and, and the cost of living crisis for most of South African households will only yeah. deepen rather than being addressed, as the president had said in the State of the Nation address. So I've got a couple of really relevant things uh, that I want us to get through as we build the dimension of our understanding around why, you know, we, we say 100 rand. I mean, this is a massive increase in the food basket for people who are at the lowest rung of affordability. Let's start with the zero-rated items. So calls are growing for more food items to be zero-rated. I think at the moment, Mervyn, you've got about 19 food items, brown bread, maize meal, sam, pilchard, milk power, and so on. Which should be next and why? So, so we, we have a number. Our basket tracks 44 very basic foods. Uh, of that foods, already 22 are zero-rated. The others that we would campaign for to be zero rated would include things like, for instance, peanut butter. We know peanut butter is a major source of protein. We know that parents often use it for school lunches. Uh, so that for us would be an important area to consider. Another food that we would say should be considered is possibly uh, 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 chicken, chicken cut pieces of chicken, because it's a major source of protein. It's the cheapest form of meat uh, and eaten by many South Africans. So that would also help. Then there are other things like, for instance, salt. There are soups. There are uh, which you, households use to flavor their food when they cook a stew or so on. So there are quite a few. There are about 22 foods in our basket that we would submit to Treasury for consideration for VAT exemption. Because, Iman, in the month of September, the VAT on that 22 foods stood at 319 rand. Wow. Now, that is one rand more than a 30 kg of maize meal. 
So if those VAT was exempted on those 22 foods, households would have been able to purchase either about, you know, uh, uh, 20 odd loaves of bread for the month, or they would have been able to purchase an additional 30 mm. kgs of maize beer. Again, just, uh, you know, thinking about peanut butter, that would be uh, an, an obvious first choice. So I, I wanted to um, talk about, all right, let, let's leave the, the increase between September and October of, of that 100 rand. I want to go to this. Um, you make the comment that um, it's interesting that individual food items show how crises affect and influence prices. So bird flu affecting the prices of eggs and chicken, the war in the Ukraine affecting the price of sunflower oil and embargoes affecting the prices uh, or the price of rice. But when these crises and other general time bound and lesser challenges are resolved, it doesn't often result in food prices stabilizing uh, at revel levels that were reasonably close enough to the pre-crisis prices. prices. So how do you lobby against that, Mervyn? And, and this is, again, another urgent one. So this is particularly directed at the food industry. It is what we call the rocket and feather effect. As soon as an input cost increases, like petrol, or there's a crisis, we see an immediate shooting up of prices. But when that is gone, as you have said, we have resolved those issues, or petrol prices have come down, electricity has stabilized, etc. then it's like a feather that floats down, and we never get back to where we were before. So that's specifically directed at the food industry, those who do producing and manufacturing and logistics, as well as the retail sector. Because very often, it is almost impossible for us to get data as to where in the value chains are these inflationary pressures staying high and whether it is in fact justified or not. According to our calculation, most of the input costs that have allowed foods to spike in the past have now settled. Global food commodity prices have come down, et cetera, and we are not seeing that. And we are therefore suspecting that it is these uh, food companies and these retailers who are in fact increasing their profit margins. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it's a call towards these companies to show their social responsibility and their social patriotism to help resolve the food and hunger crisis that we see in our country every day. You know, Mervyn, often when we talk, we stick to the numbers and uh, we stick to some of the trends. But I, I found what was really interesting recently was how you involve the community in the studies and how especially women in low-income areas are brought into the pool of reporting. They report prices relating to their food baskets. So please share with us and, and, and the nation how you go about making sure that what you're sharing with all of us is really connected to the experience of, of, of real people in our communities. Yes, Iman. So what we do is we have this basket of 44 foods that we track. Before we decide on that basket, and that happens every two or three years, we have focus groups in low-income areas. So we're talking about Fosluris in Joburg and in Hillbrow in Joburg or in uh, uh, um, uh, Soweto, uh, we're talking about going to women in, in the outskirts of Cape Town, places like Philippi to Noon. We talk to people in, 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 Johann in Durban, like in Kwamashu, et cetera. And we ask the women what they would like to purchase should they have sufficient amount of money. And the 44 foods that are prioritized by these women across the country, those are the foods we track. And then we ask, we appoint, and in fact, we pay uh, uh, women in low income areas to do the data collection based on exactly how they will shop. So that we are quite sure by the end of the day that the data we put out are actually reflective of the situation within households and reflects the conditions of low income South African households. And, uh, and yeah. so we believe that our data speaks to that reality. I really get, hope you get more, more grant funding uh, to be able to do that work because you're doing two things. You're getting real-time credible information, but you're also supporting the women uh, to do it um, financially, which is, I, I think, really remarkable as well. Mervyn Abrams, it's always a pleasure talking to you. 